Hello and welcome to Basic Arithmetic Without a Calculator. I'm Elizabeth Johnson and this is Lesson 5C, Addition and Subtraction of Fractions and Mixed Numerals. What you're looking at here is an example of two fractions that we want to add together. So in order to do it, you might think that you want to add the 3 plus 2 and then the 6 plus 6, but that's actually not the case because we've got a piece of pie that's been cut into sixes. On the left there are three sixes and on the right there are two sixes. So if I added three sixes and two sixes, it only makes sense that I would end up with five sixes. As long as the numbers at the bottom, the denominators, are exactly the same, I don't have to do any work to the denominator. It just stays the same. It's the numbers at the top, the numerators, that I'm worried about. The 3 plus 2, and that equals 5. So you can see by doing this, it's actually pretty easy to add fractions. Well, let's see if subtracting is any harder. In this case, we're going to do the same thing. We've got three sixes, and this time we're going to remove from that two sixes. So if I had three lovely pieces of pie, and I'm about to lose two of them, obviously I'm only going to have one in the end. I'm going to have one of those six pieces. One sixth. So remember, if the two denominators are the same, don't do any work to them at all. Just write it down. It's the top numbers, the numerators, that you have to work with. So, let's try a few more examples. Here we've got addition problems. And in this case, they all have common denominators, so our work shouldn't be too hard. Let's start over here. 1 eighth plus 4 eighths. The eighths are the same, so they're going to stay the same. It's the top numbers I have to add. 1 plus 5, sorry, 1 plus 4, that equals 5. Now let's try this one. The sevens are the same again. No work to be done. Just write the seven in. We'll add the two plus three though, and that'll give us five. Well, this fraction is as simple as it can get. I don't have to do anything more to it. Let's try this one. You've got four twelves plus five twelves. The answer is going to be in twelves. We know that. And the top number, the numerator, four plus five, that equals 9. Now looking at this fraction, I'm thinking it's going to need to get simplified because both 9 and 12 can be divided evenly by 3. So if you can simplify a fraction, you have to do it. So let's divide 9 by 3 and we'll end up with 3. And whatever you do to the top, you have to do to the bottom. So we're going to divide the 12 by 3 as well. 12 divided by 3 that equals 4. So 4 twelfths plus 5 twelfths actually equals 3 fourths. All right, now in our last example for addition, we've got 9 sixteenths plus 9 sixteenths. The answer would have to be in sixteenths. But what about the top number, 9 plus 9? That's going to be 18. Well, have a look at this fraction and see if there's anything you can do to it to make it a bit better. For one thing, it's an improper fraction. That means that the top number is larger than the bottom number, and I'm going to have to change it into a mixed numeral. And if you remember the steps for that, you simply take the bottom number and divide it up into the top number. 16 goes into 18 one time, with 2 remaining. The 2 becomes your numerator. And of course, the denominator is going to stay the same. 16. Well, you may think you're finished, but there's one more step that could be done here. You've got a fraction that can be simplified. 2 sixteenths. Both of these numbers can be divided by 2. So we're going to simplify this fraction. We won't do anything to the whole number. It's going to stay a 1 but the fraction's got to get simplified. 2 will have to be divided by 2. 2 goes into 2 one time. And whatever I did to the top, I have to do to the bottom. I divided it by 2, 
So I'll divide the 16 by 2. 16 divided by 2 equals 8. So I finally have my answer. I had to work for that one. The answer is 1 and 1 eighth. Okay, so that's how you do adding. Let's see how you subtract fractions when they have common denominators. Well, as you saw in the first example, it's pretty much the same thing. If you've got 5 eighths minus 4 eighths, well, the eighths are going to stay the same. So there's your denominator. But let's subtract the top number, shall we? 5 minus 4, that equals 1. Now for the next example, 6 sevens minus 3 sevens. Sevens stay the same because the denominator is the same. 6 minus 3 equals 3. This fraction's finished. It doesn't need any more work. Let's try this one. 7 twelves minus 5 twelves. Well, the twelves are the same, so I don't have to change them. They stay 12. 7 minus 5, though, that equals 2. And we've got another fraction that needs to be simplified here. You can tell because both numbers are even numbers, so obviously they can both be divided by 2. If you can divide a, a fraction by a number, the top and the bottom by the same number, you need to do that. You need to simplify every fraction. So let's divide them both by 2. 2 divided by 2, that equals 1. 12 divided by 2, that equals 6. So our new fraction will be 1 sixth. Let's work on this last example now. 9 sixteenths minus 5 sixteenths. The answer is going to definitely be in sixteenths. Or at least it looks that way. Now we've got 9 minus 5. Well, 9 minus 5, that equals 4. But are we finished? I don't think so. Because both of these numbers are even, I know that it can be at least divided by 2. But in fact, both of these numbers, the numerator and the denominator, can be divided by 4. So let's do that. 4 divided by 4 equals 1. And 16 divided by 4 equals 4. And so really, 4 sixteenths equals 1 fourth. 1 fourth is the simplest form to write 4 sixteenths in. So that's going to be enough for you to remember for now. Have a go at the practice problems. If you get stuck, if you're at home, try the video again. You can stop it, rewind it, and watch it again. Save any questions for class. And we'll see you back again in the next video.